Welcome to Made on Maple Street. I'm Andrea and I'm glad you're here. In today's video, I'm sharing seven garden themed DIY projects using inexpensive items from Dollar Tree and Joanne. If you're a fan of seasonal DIYs, please consider subscribing so you don't miss a future video. For the first DIY, I started with this frame from Dollar Tree. After removing the backing from the frame, I used my Cricut spatula to scrape the text off the glass and remove the residue with a towel. For the background of the sign, I used a napkin out of this package from Joanne. I unfolded the napkin and traced around the backing I removed from the frame earlier. After cutting the napkin to fit, I used a glue stick to attach it to the backing. I smoothed the napkin with my hand and placed the backing back in the frame. Next I used my Cricut machine to cut a bee out of matte black vinyl. I weeded out the excess pieces and applied some transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. To help me align the bee on the frame, I used my cube laser level to make a line down the center and place the bee on the glass. I pressed the vinyl down with my scraper tool, removed the transfer tape, and this simple DIY was finished. I love the way this one turned out. This next project was inspired by something I saw while shopping at Joanne a few weeks ago. I started with a wood blend wreath from Dollar Tree. I removed the tag and gave the entire wreath a coat of antique wax from Waverly. The nooks and crannies on this wreath made it a bit challenging to paint, but I think the imperfections give it character. Once the wax was dry, I grabbed this canvas drop cloth that I picked up at Lowe's. I spread out the canvas and placed the wreath in the corner. Then I traced around the wreath with a sharpie and cut it out. I used my Cricut machine to cut the words, I'll always pick you, out of infusible ink and weeded out the excess. Next I spread my canvas on the Easy Press mat and used my Easy Press Mini to preheat the cloth. Then I put a sheet of cardstock under the canvas to protect the mat from color transfer. I placed the wreath on the canvas for reference and arranged the words face down near the top. I covered the text with butcher paper and used my Easy Press Mini to press the infusible ink into the canvas. After peeling up the words, I realized that the letters I and P needed to be darker, so I carefully placed the infusible ink back down and went over those two letters a bit longer. Once I was happy with how the words looked, I wrapped a piece of jute twine around the wreath to add more visual interest. Then I attached the canvas to the back of the wreath using hot glue. I worked in sections to make sure the canvas was tightly secured to the wreath. Once the glue hardened, I trimmed the excess canvas from around the wreath. Next, I grabbed some greenery picks from Dollar Tree. I used my wire cutter to trim the individual stems from the picks. Then I trimmed the stems to varying lengths and arranged them at the bottom of the wreath. After arranging the greenery and flowers, I tied a piece of thick jute twine to the top of the wreath to act as a hanger. I wanted to cover up the stems at the bottom of the wreath, so I added a thin sheet of moss from my stash. I 
secured the moss with hot glue, and this adorable wraith was complete. Do you like what you see so far? Be sure to let me know by hitting the thumbs up button down below. This next simple DIY was made possible by a gift from my friend Chris. He sent me a package of crafty happy mail and this cutting board was one of the items inside. I created a wildflower arrangement on Cricut Design Space and used my Cricut machine to cut the flowers out of matte black vinyl. After weeding the vinyl, I cut a piece of transfer tape, lined it up to the bottom of the flowers, and rubbed my scraper over the design. I removed the white backing from the vinyl and aligned the flowers to the bottom of the cutting board. I used quite a bit of pressure to rub the transfer sheet with my scraper and used my weeding tool to help separate the vinyl from the transfer sheet as I was peeling it away. Next I put some jute twine through the hole at the top of the cutting board. I wrapped painter's tape around the ends of the twine and strung three wooden beads from Amazon onto the twine. I didn't like the way the beads hung, so I decided to tie a knot in the twine near the top of the cutting board. It definitely would have been easier if I had done that before stringing the beads, but I made it work. Then I removed the painter's tape and tied a knot in the end of the twine to finish off this fun piece. I think this fun piece turned out so cute. Are you on Instagram? I'd love to connect with you there. Come find me at Made on Maple Street. For this project, I started by peeling the labels off of one of my favorite glass Wii yogurt containers. I gave the jar two coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. While the paint was drying, I grabbed a wood round from my stash and used a Dremel tool to make a hole in the bottom of the wood. Then I used my Cricut machine to cut a bird silhouette out of vinyl to use as a stencil. I trimmed around the bird to make it easier for me to see where I was placing it on my wood round. Once the vinyl was in place and the transfer tape was removed, I grabbed a scorch marker that I borrowed from my friend Tiffany. Using the marker, I colored in the entire design and then removed the vinyl from the wood. I used my heat gun to apply heat to the design and it became burnt into the wood. Next, I applied a coat of antique wax to a short dowel rod with a baby wipe. Once the wax was dry, I put some wood glue in the hole I made in the wood round and put the dowel rod into the hole. While waiting for the wood glue to dry, I went back to the jar I previously painted and glued some floral foam inside. I grabbed some wildflower picks I had left over from earlier and trimmed them down using my wire cutter. I stuck them down into the floral foam until I was happy with the arrangement. Then, I used my miter shears to trim down the dowel rod and stuck the wood round down into the wildflower arrangement. I finished this project by tying a piece of jute twine to the top of the jar. For this next DIY, I started with a wood candle cup from a pack I picked up at Joanne. Using a baby wipe, I gave the candle cup a coat of antique wax and set it aside to dry. Next, I grabbed a flat wooden oval and several small wooden beads. I used my miter shears to cut the beads in half and secured them to the edge of the oval with some hot glue. Then 
Then I gave the oval and beads a coat of chalk paint in the color plaster. I painted a short dowel rod using that same chalk paint. Next I used a makeup sponge to dab a bit of mineral chalk paint on the beads around the edge of the oval. While the paint was drying, I found a cute bunny design on Cricut Design Space and cut it out of matte black vinyl. After weeding the vinyl, I applied it to the oval with the help of my Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape. I prefer this transfer tape because it doesn't peel any paint off of my projects. I attached the dowel rod to the back of the oval with some hot glue and trimmed the dowel to make it a bit shorter. Then I put a good amount of hot glue into the candle cup, stuck the dowel rod down into the cup, and added even more glue. Next I grabbed a package of Dollar Tree floral moss and used a bamboo skewer to stick the moss down into the cup. I hot glued a bit more of the moss around the top of the cup and gave it a little trim. I finished this DIY by tying a piece of jute twine into a bow beneath the oval and cutting the tails so they were even. This one will make a great addition to a tiered tray. For this simple project, I started out with a sign from Dollar Tree. After removing the sticker from the back, I peeled a large section of paper off of the front. There was a lot of residue left, so I laid a baby wipe on the sign for a bit and then used my paint scraper to scrape it away. Once the sign dried, I gave the front and sides a good coat of white chalk paint. Next, I grabbed these adorable butterfly wall stickers from Dollar Tree. I also grabbed a sheet of transparency film. I placed five of the butterfly stickers on the transparency film and carefully cut them out. Then I folded the wings toward each other so they were sticking up. I arranged the butterflies on the sign until I was happy with their placement. Then I used some tacky glue to adhere the butterflies to the sign. I used tacky glue because it doesn't dry as quickly as hot glue, so I had some time to move the butterflies around if I wanted to change their placement on the sign. Once the glue was dry, this fun little sign was complete. I saw Whitney over at Whiskey and Wit use these Dollar Tree wood pieces as blanks in some of her videos, so I thought I'd give it a try. I started by removing the stickers from the backs of these crates and giving them a coat of antique wax. Next I grabbed these two floral garlands from Dollar Tree. The flowers and leaves were sewn together with a thin string, so I used my weeding tool to help me remove the string from all of the felt pieces. I set the flowers aside and grabbed some Dollar Tree bamboo skewers and gave them a coat of celery chalk paint. The felt leaves were a bit too bright for me, so I gave them a coat of celery paint as well. While the paint was drying, I used hot glue to attach the middle pieces to the flowers. I arranged the flowers on the crates and placed a bamboo skewer under each one. I used more hot glue to attach the skewers to the flowers. 
Next, I marked each skewer and used my miter shears to cut them to fit on the sign. To help the flower sit flush against the sign, I cut some pieces of mounting foam and placed them on the backs of the flowers. Then I used hot glue to adhere the flowers to the sign. I put a bit of hot glue on the leaves and placed them on the stems of the flowers. I repeated the same process with the colorful flowers. Next, I grabbed these adorable wooden bees that were sent from my friend Chris. I wrapped some floral wire around a pencil and cut it with my wire cutter. Then I removed the wire from the pencil and stretched it out a bit. I trimmed the wire into shorter pieces. I placed a dab of hot glue on the back of a bee and put a piece of wire in the glue. I put another bee on top of the glue to sandwich the wire between the bees. Then I used hot glue to attach the other end of the wire to the sign, hiding the glue behind a flower so it wouldn't be seen. I repeated the process with three more bees, and these whimsical flower signs were finished. I think I like the white flowers best. Which ones do you prefer? That's it for today's video. I hope you found some inspiration to create some DIYs of your own. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments below. Thanks for watching.